Hello there! I think the time has come for me to finish the law and justice, especially because as you can see I've got one wheel already on the rack and two others in the background which are all in the need of tensioning, so I need to get this going or get this finished. As you can see I have already painted this in this light blue color and if you're wondering what's the story with the color, it's the cheapest paint I was able to get. Anyway, I've got all the materials, I've got some bar steel, I've got this dial over here, I've got some ah, steel tape and all of these are going to be used to make the measurement, well, apparatus, pointy bits which are going to help me or are necessary to make, well, complete wheel build. Anyway, let's start. We're going to start with a piece of bar steel in order to set uh, the reference point for the middle of, uh, of the rack and in essence of the wheel which is going to get built. So, let's get on with it. Alright then, I've got this middle section, there's 97 millimeters both sides, so it's almost dead center. And now I made these two angled pieces, which I'm going to be installing here. And once they are here, I'm going to use this threaded rod to make these two claws that are going to be used to center the wheel. And if you're wondering how I'm going to install these here, I'm going to be using magic in a form of a magnet and if you're one of those people who doesn't know how they work it has to do with strong nuclear force I think strong nuclear force and something something gluons something something these are very strong neodymium magnets and it's going to be very very well installed on the rack. The positions here are fixed 29er, 27.5, 26, 24 and 20 inch wheels. If I'm going to be needing some other size I just need to add another hole or maybe I'm going to add some sliding thingy. We'll see. Alright then, so it's the next day, I have taken everything apart, I made uh, this bracket here which is going to be used to be able, to, for me to be able to uh, center the wheel radially and I have cleaned everything and I intend to use a dual sided sticky tape over here in order to glue this to, to these magnets here. And then, once I'm done with everything, uh, this wheel here is going to get tensioned correctly and we'll see how this entire assembly is going to work. Alright, I'm done with this, so it's installed and I can now try to tension this wheel and I have really, well, strong doubts about whether this is going to be sufficient. There's too much fuffing about with it, so I'm probably going to try something else. But for now, let's see how this works. Alright, I'm done with making this wheel. Unfortunately, it's not up to my very high standard because I am a hypocrite, because I'm just not patient enough to follow my own advice. However, it is going to be structurally sound, and if it's not, I'm not going to be writing it, so, you know, I'm also evil. As I was playing with it, I have a few conclusions about my splendid design. The first one, which is something I am very pleased with, uh, the entire stand is very rigid, you can see how much of a difference even a quarter of a turn of a nipple is going to make on a wheel, so making those micro adjustments is very easy and is very, well, noticeable. Now, a few problems I have noticed are 
first of all it's not really user friendly as you can see there are bolts threaded rods the entire setup of the of the of the truing stand requires quite a bit of faffing with it and i just wanted something where i'm going to throw and uh, freshly laced wheel and just start uh, tensioning it so i'm going to need to rework uh, this entire thing because it's not working to my or it's not providing what i was expecting to get i would probably make some sort of a pantograph or some arm or something that's going to be well much more user friendly anyway problem number two you can see that these two elements have the tips of the threaded rods which are working as a claw for the for the rim are in the same plane likewise all of these are in the same plane so essentially uh, these are identical well elements these two points are in this uh, in the same positions on both sides so what should happen if i put this part on this side obviously i should have the same clearance between the tip on the other side unfortunately i haven't even touched uh, the middle railing here and I'm already touching the rim. There you go. I'm already touching the rim, which means that the entire thing is unfortunately not geometrically correct. What uh, does it mean really? Either one of the legs is, or both of them are crooked in this direction, which causes this five millimeter gap because uh, the wheel is more or less centered between the dropouts here let's call it like that or uh, these two are in different planes and if, when i'm putting the wheel or inserting the wheel in them the wheel is actually crooked in in this plane and as of yet i don't know how to address this because i don't know which of these two is happening However, what's crucial here is that if I want to make another wheel on this rack, I need to address the problem because, you know, fuffing with the centering tool or the dish measuring tool is simply, well, the core reason why I'm making this is that I don't want to be fuffing with plenty of tools. Now, this here is in the center. I know this, I have measured this several times. These two have the same geometry. So, my options are either move the center, uh, the center railing, by three or four millimeters to this side, which should compensate for this being crooked if these two are like this, or try to cold set the entire truing stand uh, so it's geometrically correct. Essentially, do what frame manufacturers do when they stop welding. Obviously, this is my first weld job. Obviously, this is a steel construction. Obviously, there's going to be some post weld stress. So, obviously, I will have to deal with this. Anyway, it means that it's back to the drawing board. Alright, so overnight I decided to cold set it to a correct geometry. And my thinking at this very moment, apart from a few attempts at using plain old-fashioned violence, which didn't work. I need to apply violence with a magnification. I'm going to cold set it using this threaded M14 rod. And my thinking is that if this side is very stiff, and as you can see it's, it's held securely in the vise and made more rigid with this addition. You can see how I was training to weld. Anyway, if I'm going to screw this in, I should get this leg to be closer to a spread that's going to be centered around the railing here in the inside or this rail, this bar in the inside which sets the middle of the table and once I'm centered I should be able to cold set it in the old-fashioned way to get the correct spacing of both legs of the of the throwing stand and I think once I am, uh, this is 21 centimeters, and once I am at about 20 and a half, maybe 20 and 4 millimeters in this spacing cold set, 
once I take off the bar they should be remaining at the spacing and then I can return to the correct spacing I was envisioning. I need to wrench it through this one. Oh, okay. Applying violence. Unfortunately, I don't have a 16 millimeter threaded rod and it's Sunday so I can't get one however I already managed to crush it to 20.4 let's check the geometry and we'll see whether, whether further application of violence in this particular way is going to be necessary all right so that didn't work the direction is correct but the magnitude hasn't been reached so what I'm going to do I have switched to a thinner uh, thinner threaded rod because I want to avoid destroying the threads for the for the clamping screws and I'm going to apply more violence uh, this is what handmade truly means a guy screwing with something until it works and quite often demanding exorbitant amount of money once they're done welcome to reality right different wheels so the results are incomparable with the previous one however you can see still that I still have this asymmetry between left and right so I think I need to change my approach so now I am spreading the other leg away which should also help with the rather unfortunate geometry problem so the good thing it has gotten a little better the gap here is three millimeters maybe where's my kind of part here it is four millimeters so the gap has been reduced the bad thing is still not there but the progress is visible so i'm going to continue doing what i've been doing up to now all right I think the time has come for me to take the L on this one. I've been cold setting, or bending, this side and this side in every imaginable direction for the last hour or so, and I've gotten nowhere. I am consistently getting uh, the wheel once these both sides are centered, or there's a di uh, equal distance from this side and this side, I am consistently getting uh, about 4 mm offset at the claws of the measuring devices, which means most likely that the problem isn't geometry of the rack, it was correct from the start, but uh, these two holes here aren't perfectly in line, so once, I'm, once I uh, tighten up the wheel inside the throwing stand, the wheel is always sitting at an angle just a little bit and it's going to well mess up my my measurement or my my, my uh, assumptions about the geometry of the entire thing so what i need to do now is mourn because obviously it's not as good as i hoped it's going to be but this doesn't make this throwing stunt unusable because i just need to measure the offset for each particular wheel size because i can't just move this center line because this offset is going to be different for each uh, size of the wheel it's going to be the largest on 29er and smallest on 20 uh, on 20 inch wheels and considering i've gotten 
well, this got me busy for quite a long time. I think the time has come for me to finish this video because there are two wheels there which I need to finish because I've been putting it off for like a month or so already. So in the next video, which is going to happen sometime in the future, I'm going to be trying to devise something better than this because this, this measuring clause, kind of suck. Anyway, thank you for your undivided attention, subscribe, comment and all that good things. And I hope to see you on the next one.